Greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Spock Connection with the Wiki Comic Book Roundup. We have covered this week's Marvel books as well as some of the DC books. Um, we actually had quite a few DC books. In fact, all we had almost as many DC books as we did uh, Marvel books. Anyway, we covered the Bat books as well as the Black Label book for the DC books. We've also covered uh, not the New Noctera. We've still got one more uh, non-Marvel, non-DC book, which we'll be doing at the very end here. Kicking, so starting off, we've got Justice League number 64. Where we left off, the League had, uh, well, the League had fought off the Warlord controlling um, uh, Naomi's homeworld. Hmm. Well, home Earth, but said Warlord, or well, they had fought off one of the Warlords of the, of her home Earth, but another Warlord basically said, you know, hey, we need to decide that they were going to that he and the others were going to come to the primary DC Earth. So we start a new uh, we're starting a new story arc, United Order. We begin with a meeting of the you know the United Planets. Um, they are discussing the Sinmar Utopica. It's explained that the Sinmar star system was only recently discovered at the farthest regions of the galaxy. The Sinmar Governing Collective had selected one of their own warriors to be given ultimate power. He was created in the shadow of Kal-El of Earth. Basically, their own Superman. However, like so many others before, he was he had he had chosen to use his power for selfish internal purpose, purposes. He attacked Earth, kidnapped Superman, turned on his world government, and attempted to take over the Sinmar Collective. And so, the United Order is, is uh, brought, called as the first witness. The United Order being kind of a Justice League of the United Planets. You have uh, Prince Zarep of uh, Tamaran. Hawkslayer of Thanagar, Dominator, I think it's Zero Zero of the Dominators, Blood, Bloodstar of the Gordanians, Dividend of the Daxamites, and there are a couple others as well that aren't named. But so, so they. They uh, give testimony, but. Sinmar's gone. He's escaped and he's wreaking havoc on the uh, the planet. On Earth at Coast City, uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary go to watch the sunset. But they're being watched through a sniper scope. But mainly, Green Arrow wanted to do something nice. He's getting hit in the head, he wanted to, you know, all you think about was Dinah, and he wanted to, you know, do something nice with her. So, yeah. At the Hall of Justice, Aquaman's trying to teach Naomi how to fight, but uh, she's a little because of her power levels, she's a little nervous to do so. Um, her parents show up at the Hall of Justice, are met by the Wonder Twins, um, and brought back to. Where the training is going on, apparently um, it got a little heated for a moment. Um, but Naomi's parents were introduced to Aquaman, Hipp Hippolyta, Hawk Girl, and Black Adam. And Black Adam is uh, actually really is actually rather polite, you know, for Black Adam, stating that uh, Naomi's parents. Uh, did a flawless job raising their daughter. I think most people are terrible at it. Um, however, the United Order uh, contacts the Justice League because, well, Sinmar's gotten Sinmar kicked their asses up one side and down the other, and is headed to Earth. Um, later that night, with uh, Green Arrow and Black Canary, they uh, arrive at Green Arrow's uh, villa, recently purchased from Dead Corps. 
and he tells Dinah that they're being, and all he tells Dinah they're being, they're being hunted. A sniper, and they take him down uh, with a boxing glove arrow, canary cry, and uh, taser arrow. Apparently, he's related to Checkmate. Called himself the Demon Rose. So maybe that Checkmate book, book is going to be necessary after all. Damn it. Haven't read Leviathan. Uh, back to the Hall of Justice. Um, Superman uh, basically says, get, every, get everyone, all the heavy hitters handy, because we're going to need them as Sinmar arrives on Earth. And that is where the, just, that's where the A story is. The A story is. The backup story for Justice League Dark. Um, oh, Elnara is, takes on the, the uh, cultists in Gotham while Batman watches, eventually joining in. Uh, she presents himself to her, or to him, and he basically tells her, you know, hey, you know, I work alone, uh, I'll, I'll handle this, you, you know, try not to get up, you know, so you'll probably just get in the way. So, Batman, at the Hall of Justice, uh, Ragman is officially inducted into the Justice League Dark, Well, Batman uh, follow, tracks the cultists and is mystically atta is attacked through uh, in mental and mystical manners. However, Elnara saves the day and gets him out of the way. Turns out the attack perpetrated on Batman was uh, done by forcing right here Singh. To well, attack, and that is where the story ends for now. Um, interesting first start to uh, new new story. Interesting start to a new story arc for uh, Justice League. Justice League Dark is coming along interestingly. Uh, again, a similar issue I've, that I've got there as I have with the Batman books is that they're setting up the Future State Justice League Dark stuff. They're very clearly setting up the Future State Justice League Dark stuff. Um, but yeah. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty good. Moving on, though, we got Crime Syndicate number five. Where we'd left off, Power Ring had been recruited into the into Alexander Luther's Legion of Justice. The Legion goes to, uh, Johnny Quick's family farm. Uh, we get some background on some of the members. Uh, Power Tower, Giganta, used to be a uh, an ally of um, Atomica's until she found out the truth about Atomica. Uh, Red Hood it is, Har is Harley Quinn. But uh, at the at Johnny Hook Family Farm, they find dead bodies, a bunch of them. But uh, Tomica bursts up, gets in uh, Savannah's uh, cheetah's throat and expands her way out, injuring her. At least, at the very least, injuring her. The next day, um, Owlman, Superwoman, and uh, Ultraman are looking into things and they are looking into what happened. Atomica is not happy that the three of them weren't there when you know they were neat necessary, but yeah. Um, turns out, though, they've got, uh, some, some nanites have, uh, were, ended up, made their way onto Lex, and, yeah, take, take control of the 
just Legio Justice's satellites. As Owlman, Ultraman, Superwoman, and Atomic all show up. Um, their plan is to try to recruit uh, power into their side. Um, while uh, Ultraman and Ronald duke it out on what appears to be the moon. Um, but Atomica is clearly planning to sell some scores and, and make sure that uh, the Legion of Justice does not keep hold of uh, Johnny Quick's body. Then uh, Ultraman shows up, takes a swing at, Lu at uh, Luther, but is stopped. By Ultra Girl. Ultraman's cousin. Our backup story it concerns the origin of Johnny Quick. Um, apparently his his dad and his brothers were uh, rather focused on uh, raising dogs for, uh, for fighting purposes. Um, Johnny tried to... Uh, do what he could to save them, and then also did, tried to do what he could to get some revenge on his family. Ended up splashed with some chemicals during the light and was struck by lightning. <clears throat> and so he did what he, all he wanted to do and ran. Apparently, he splattered his dad on the side, along the side of the, of the house, family house, and free, once again, freed the dogs. And well, that's where it all started. Uh, interesting issue. I'm very curious to see what's going to happen with. Uh, the fact that Johnny Quick is dead, it, but, uh, the origin story on Johnny Quick was interesting. Tragedy seems to be a major thing there, with, the, with a lot of their origins. Anyways, moving on to our next book, we've got Just League on Infinity, number one. Just League Infinity is, or Infinity is a, uh, Basically, basically, it follows up uh, Justice League Unlimited. Um, last episode of which had uh, Darkseid invading the Earth. The League and the Legion of Doom teamed up to, to try and stop him. Uh, Superman and Darkseid had a knockdown, drag out fight that you know shattered windows throughout Metropolis. And hell, Superman didn't have to hold back, so yeah. Uh, the issue begins, the Mazo is flying through space, trying to, you know, going, just on his exploration to, you know, learn, answer the questions he has, you know. Um, there are legends already about a Mazo that have spread throughout the cosmos, many of which are exaggerated or flat out wrong. But as he continues on his travels, he comes upon a door, which he goes through, and it's apparently an insane fun... Hall of Mirrors type of thing. Um, but the issue is narrated largely by Marshall Manor, who is, uh, who turns out has been for years wandering the, traveling the earth in various, uh, form, as, uh, shifting shapes, nationalities, races, genders, seeking a better understanding of human beings, but what he was truly seeking was a better understanding of himself, which had eluded him. Uh, back at Metro Tower, they go to the Justice League. Um, turns out Flash was on a date, kissing his was kissing his date, you know, and then he gets a distress call. Made a lame, lame excuse and a hasty exit for a surprise party. The rest of the league wishes them a happy birthday. Um, turns out that Mar Marshman is still linked to them, though he largely has the the link. Push to the side, kind of. Um, but uh, the party is interrupted by the arrival of first Granny Goodness, who's wanting to take down uh, Superman, and then Calabac, who's also wanting to take down Superman. Both of whom are vying for uh, leadership of Apocalypse, much as how, much the same way as uh, when Darkseid was believed dead early on in the uh, Justice League run. 
Um, but uh, Amazo's dealing with some odd stuff in this strange cracked mirror dimension, and he cracks a wall, which seems which causes a leak, a neg negligible trail of unknown energy would all too soon change everything. But, uh, back on Earth, um, Mr. Miracle is able to uh, use his mother box to basically cause the, uh, the two boom tubes to reopen and basically pull in the, the opposing forces, getting them away from Earth. Um, later on, uh, Sue Rand's enjoying dinner with Lois, and that negligible ener that energy is still leaking. To them, Lois and, Cl and Cal have a, have a toast, and the energy hits Superman. Replacing him with uh, his, I, believe, I want to say it's the Earth 10 version of Superman. Generally speaking, the Earth 10 version of Superman. Uh, the Earth 10 version of Superman was. Earth 10 is usually depicted as being um, a world where the Nazis won World War II. The Justice League, usually in a. Uh, is usually the same characters, just, well, Nazi versions of themselves. And now he's that version of Superman is in Lois and Clark's apartment, and normal Superman is nowhere to be seen, and that is where the issue ends. Uh, interesting start. Um, I'm a, I, I was I was a huge fan of Justice League and Justice League Unlimited when I was younger, and to be I wouldn't say growing up, so I was already technically speaking an adult legally, not mentally, but legally. Mm -hmm. That's what counts, right? But uh, so yeah, I'm all, I I honestly probably should have uh, jumped on to uh, Batman. Batman: The Adventures The Adventure Continues, but I wasn't thinking about it at first, and so, oops. But yeah, hopping on to Just the Infinity right off the bat. It's neat to see uh, DC opting to continue those stories. So yeah. Anyways, moving on to our next book, we got Crush and Logo number two. Where we left off, Crush, having just, uh, been, been, I mean, broken up with her girlfriend, uh, is heading into space to visit her dad in space jail. Uh, the issue is largely about her just fought, making her way through space and you know trying to ignore. Running, totally not running from her problems. Cause if she, if there's any problems she's got, it's her dad. That's where she's going to, right? But she runs out of coffee. We also have a flashback to how her and her her ex girlfriend, now ex girlfriend Kate, first met. It was at a Larry's Burgers uh, Playland. And, uh, yeah. But we also get some not-so-great memories about the tw of them. Um, like, Crush kind of blowing off Valentine's Day. And Kate trying to say, I'm not, I'm not someone who, for Valentine's Day is a big deal, but this kind of was, you know, so. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I mentioned that uh, Crush was out of coffee, so... Yeah, she's got to go get some more coffee. Start, goes to a place called Space Brew. Turns out the, the guy she was beating up in the, first, in the beginning of the first issue is a coffeeologist at Space Brew. And apparently he makes good coffee. But he and his baristas have uh, sewed away on Crush's ship and attack her. And yeah, she blows up the ship and you know, launches everyone into space. Um, but Kate also sends a message to Crush. You know, very much a 
post breakup type message. You know, I still care about you. You know, and uh, I mean, of course, you know, maybe that's a little self destructive. But while floating through space, because apparently Crush doesn't need oxygen, she comes upon, or she's she's found by a prison garbage truck, which she hop, hitches a ride onto the prison. Turns out there's a ride in progress as Lobo is making his way through to uh, his group therapy session. And he just calmly walks through the, 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 the riot, gets to therapy, and apparently he's happy. But, uh, so Crush arrives and, uh, explains the purpose of her visit. She hears the Lobo because, well, she's his kid. That where really the issue ends. Crush Love has been so far, you know, it, it, it's fun. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to eke out eight issues, but okay. Yeah. And our final book of the week Magic the Gathering number four. Oh, but that's right, it's the Hidden Planeswalker variant. Oh, a red insert. Well, who could possibly be our mystery planeswalker on the variant cover? Whoever could be the the red planeswalker? That's right, it's Chandra. Totally not my favorite planeswalker. Okay, she totally is. Anyway, so where we left off, um... Ral Zarek, uh, Kaya, and um, uh, Vraska were search were uh, had made accusations against the Demir and went to decide they were to go find them and bring the accusations to them. Well, yeah, Dustmantle's been pretty much sacked, making them realize that oh, maybe there were four attacks. They present their findings to Ned Mizzet. Mizzet's like, hmm. It was, you know, it was probably, it, it was, it was, you know, all, it was probably just to, to throw, throw you guys off. You know, there were a bunch of attacks throughout uh, Ravnica while you were gone that were signed by the Demir. So, it's the Demir. But, Raoul makes a point that, you know, the Demir don't usually sign their work. And so, that night... As all three sleep, Lazav, the guild, the Demir Guildmaster, talks, approaches each of them, basically kind of saying, you know, hey, yeah, we were, you know, some, we found a conspiracy that was impenetrable, and basically, you know, okay, well, the. And he does. He takes credit for what for what was his uh, for what he did do, for what he and the Demir Guild did do. But he also is looking at what happened there. You know, you you the three of you and Jace Bellerin got in the way of that attack. They realized it was at the hospital. But, uh, Lazav further explains that the, uh, the hospital is a secret conspiracy hiding behind a shield of charity and neutrality. It's taken someone infected the city with the faith of a dark god, one that empowers them, and whom they wish to bring to Ravnica. A god that Lazav knows nothing of, uh, rather, uh, aside from a name, which he will only whisper in a dream. And he whispers the name to all three of them. So the next day... Raul, Kaya, and Vraska go to the hospital with, you know, with, you know, reinforcements. And, yeah. It doesn't go well. A lot of the, a lot of the, uh, guildless are basically, you know, hey, you know, 
Just because you guys are guild matches doesn't mean you get to pick on the, those that aren't in, that aren't in guilds. But, uh, and then Aurelia show. Watching everything in, unfold is Tezzeret. Then, uh, before things get really bad, Aurelia shows up. There's a discussion had. And a pragmatic solution is presented. The three the, the three guilds make a strategic withdrawal. But Raoul says to uh the the administrator of the hospital that uh he knows is God's name. To which he the response is simply soon guildmaster, soon everyone will. And that is where the issue ends. I'll be honest, I've since I finished reading I've been trying to figure trying to take make guesses to who the god might might be. Um it's definitely not uh Nicol Bolas. But it's I I'm, but it's definitely it's more than likely somebody that would that uh, Tezzeret would would work with so but uh, anyway you know magic is definitely getting turning into a fun title uh, well I mean it started off fun but yeah anyway that's it for now as always feel free to like share and subscribe links to my Facebook Twitter Patreon and PayPal can, can be found in the description box down below this is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying live long and rock hard.